Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. We're gonna, we got a 2016 Heritage Softail up on the lift today, and we are gonna cover rear wheel removal and reinstallation. You can do this. There's lots of reasons you're gonna have to do this, and most of it is basic hand tools that's required. The only thing you're really gonna have to pay a lot of attention detail to is your rear wheel alignment for your belt alignment and tension. It's very important. Other than that, you got this. I believe in you. Let's move in for a closer look. To remove your rear brake caliper, what you're going to do is you're just going to take out this bolt here and this bolt here. Oh, before you do that, down here, you see these little clips? So this is your ABS sensor, if you have ABS. You're going to, want to take this little clip and pop it off of the brake line there. Keep track of those little clips, you're going to need them later. If you lose them, you can probably buy more or just use a zip tie. But anyways, there they are. And uh, before we take this completely apart, we're going to have to bend up this metal tab here carefully. That way we can take this brake line out. Now, if you're just doing brake pads, you won't have to do this. But since this is uh, part of a big, long shot, um, we want to have the caliper out of the way. That way we can get the swing arm out of there. So from here, take a T40 Torx bit. Break both of these free. You don't necessarily need an extension this long. I'm just trying to keep my hands out of the shot. Also, buy really good Torx bits. The, those mediocre ones, like the ones from uh, AutoZone, they'll break. All right. Once you have both of these broken free, you should be able to loosen them, take them right on out of there. Gonna want to keep these in order just in case they're different lengths, which I believe they are. So there's the rear one, there's the front one. I guess you really can't get them screwed up, but still, it's nice to keep them in order. Then from there, you should just be able to grab your caliper and slide it off of there. If you can't for some reason, uh, maybe it's just really grabbing the rotor for whatever reason, you could actually take the screwdriver and push on the brake pad just a wee little bit and recompress the pads just a wee little bit and then you'll be able to slide that caliper off of there. And you can slide that thing right up off of there just like that. Now is a good time to check your rear brake pads. We're looking good. Uh, as long as they're thicker than a dime, you're in pretty good shape. Now we're going to set the caliper down here. Now there is the caliper bracket right here and when we pull the rear axle that will come out with it. And you want to be mindful of the ABS sensor, you want to be mindful of the location, rotation, and uh, don't damage a wire. Now we're going to loosen up the axle adjusters on both sides before we even bother taking the axle out. Now when I do these, um, I try to move both of them about the same distance. That way I can reset them back to about the same distance and it makes belt alignment, you know, uh, a lot easier because you have a good place to start. So. We're going to start basically with a ratchet up in the air and we're going to go in quarter turns. One quarter, one half, three quarters, one. So there's, we're going with one full turn. Now I'm going to do the same to the other side and hopefully I'll remember that or I'll have to go back and check this video. Uh, that way when I put it all back together, it'll be easier to get the alignment close before I do the fine tune alignment. Now we're over here on the left side of the motorcycle. And we're going to break this nut free. Seems to be inch and seven sixteenths. I have a three quarter drive ratchet set because I used to work in heavy steel. Um, most people don't have this, but you can usually just buy one of these sockets on Amazon or something. Or I think Lowbrow sells all this stuff too. But either way, just break this sucker free. It's probably going to be tight. You might need somebody to get to hold the axle for you on the other side. Lefty Lucy, that sucker off of there. Take your washer, set it in a safe location. Then you can move around to the other side of the bike. Then we're gonna take a soft face mallet. We're gonna do two things here. One, we're gonna swat the back of the tire once. Why? Because that's gonna move the axle forward a wee little bit uh, to loosen up the belt in case it hasn't already moved forward. So, there we go. 
Really didn't move much, but that's okay. Now we're gonna take our soft face mallet. You don't need one this big. And tap that axle all the way through in there. Uh, if you need to go further, you can maybe stick a socket extension in here. Just make sure you don't damage up the threads doing it. You should be able to grab the axle at the other side at this point and just pull it out of there. Keep in mind, when you do that, there's a spacer on each side of this wheel and there's an ABS sensor on the right side. So snap a few photos with your phone or something. That way you know what the order is when you go to put it all back together. All right, now the axle is sticking out a little bit ways. I can kind of reach in here, lift up on the wheel a little bit to take some load off of it, grab the axle, pull it out of there. Hopefully whoever put it in greased it. Therefore, when it comes out, it should come out nice and easy. Set this in a clean, safe location. From there, you should be able to slide your rear caliper bracket off by going forward with it, just like that. There's your spacers, there's your ABS sensor that I told you to be very careful with. Also set those all in a clean location. And grab the spacer out of the left side. Set that with the axle and everything. All right, now that all the spacers are out of the way, you should be able to roll it forward a wee little bit there. And get the belt off. Now your wheel's free. Now comes the challenge of getting the rear wheel out of this thing. So the belt guard's gonna have to come off of this no matter what in order to get the swing arm off. But if you're just taking the rear wheel off, you're still gonna wanna take this upper one off because it's gonna give you a little bit more lean this way to slide the tire out that way. So. Should, uh, hopefully there's some, oh, come on guys. Be able to take that T-bolt, hold it in place with a 916 wrench, and then take a half inch ratchet and zip the nut right off of there. Sometimes you can just spin them off your hand. Today is not that day. Should be able to slide the belt guard right on out of there. So we're gonna have to jack the bike up higher. So we're gonna adjust our ratchet straps first, loosen them up a little bit, and then jack the back end of the motorcycle up. As I'm doing this, I'm being mindful of the tension on my ratchet straps. And from there, <coughs> scooch right out of there. So, while we got the tire off, let's give it a quick once over. First things first, how are the, how are the brake rotors? No major grooving, no stepping, no warping, damage, cracking, any weirdness. We're in good shape there. Let's check out our rear wheel bearings. Should be able to jam your finger in there. Might have to use a rag or something. Should be able to jam something in there and give it a twist. Might be a little tight. Make sure it's not crunchy, grindy, pulsy, things like that. It should be an even resistance there. But don't be alarmed if there is a wee little bit of resistance there. It's a tight fit, it's not a bicycle. So let's wheel it around here the other side. Hopefully without dropping it on my foot. Again, we're gonna check out our pulley. Bike's got about 25,000 on it here. Pulley and everything looks like it's in pretty good shape. No weirdness. Um, doesn't look like the belt was trying to climb out. The owner of this thing's pretty, pretty meticulous about maintenance, so there's no real worries there. Again, we'll Reach in, grab our wheel bearings. Everything's turning as it should, so we're good to go. Nice and tight back there. We're sitting in good shape. 
Cool. The rear wheel is off. So you should be able to slide this thing back in here. Hopefully you remember exactly the appropriate angle you used to get it out. Because you're going to have to repeat that to get it back in. And I guess I probably could pick the back end of this bike up a little bit higher. But it fit. So you might have to get it a little bit higher than that. Holy crap, there was a bracket underneath the tire. <clears throat> Move that stuff out of the way. Once the rear wheel is up in here, put the belt on first. I know it sounds silly, but trust me. Roll the belt on up over the pulley. It doesn't matter that it's not tensioned or anything yet. It's just a really good plan. Otherwise, you spend a lot of time down the road fighting with it. And the belt's not too flexible, so. Then from there, <clears throat> we're gonna slide the rear caliper bracket in place. And it goes up onto this flat here that's mounted on the swing arm. So scoot your tire off to the side there. And this thing should barely fit through there. If it doesn't fit through that side, put it in through the front. There we go. And the rotor will slide into a little slot that's inside that bracket. Okay, this is where the order of everything is important. You have a skinny spacer on the right side. This spacer sits up against the axle adjuster. There's even a little witness mark on it right there, where the dirt or where the bolt was pressing up against it. Slide that in place. Take your axle, clean, lubed up with grease, slide her in there to start it. Next, you're going to want to put this spacer in this side. Make sure both sides of it are clean. And you're going to see these little grooves on here. Those actually go towards the wheel. Um, I'm not sure why. I just know that's the way they go there. I'm pretty sure this sucker is symmetrical. But, you know, we're just going to do it anyways. So we're going to slide that thing in there. It's not really going to stay. Hang on. Let's shimmy the tire around here a little bit better. There we go. But we're going to slide this thing in here. And as we lower this down, I'm gonna have to lower it down a little bit more, but as we lower this wheel down, or lower the bike down to the wheel, I'm gonna have to make sure this stays in there and goes in the back side and gets lined up. All right, we got to a spot where it's kind of balanced in right there. So I'm gonna lower it down a little bit. Check to make sure that's all still Moving freely as it should be. Ah, there we are. So this spacer has to go into that notch in the swing arm because the axle adjuster pushes against it. So there, I got the axle through the spacer, through the disc brake mount. We're gonna lower it down a wee little bit more. Then we're gonna take our ABS sensor. This will be the final spot to slide this thing in place. Whoop. And start sliding the axle all the way through. You probably have to jiggle the wheel a little bit to get it all to line up. You shouldn't, you might have to tap on this a little bit. If you do, do it with a soft face mallet. But keep in mind, if you do that, if those threads on the other end are binding up, you're going to damage those threads and it's going to be a nightmare to get the rear axle on. So uh, be very careful if you have to tap on this. All goes well, should hopefully be able to just jiggle it around and get it through there. Actually, I have to pick the back of the bike up a little bit. Mm. 
lower the back of the bike down just a wee little bit. Goes all the way through. Just like that. Then take your washer and the nut on the other side, thread it on there. Don't torque it down, don't even tighten it all the way up. Just thread it on there right now. We'll get to the rest later. So slide your pads till there's a gap in between them. Then you can take that gap in between the pads, put the rotor in there. and slide your caliper back down on there. You may have to jiggle it a little bit to get your pads to seat in place. Oh, hey, here's another point I should make. Let's see if you can see that right here. Can you see that? Right there. These two tabs of the pads go in down in there. Now some people would probably say I should put the caliper on first then slide the pads in place. That's probably the responsible way to do this. But in the end, I've never been known for being responsible. Now, you can take this bolt that goes in the back there, thread it in, get it to start in there. And don't thread it in all the way yet. Now, take your front bolt, wipe the threads clean, thread that one down in there. Locate the Torx bit socket that you had for this that you now can't find because you're disorganized. There we are. Take your T40 Torx bit. And that thing should thread in there relatively easily. Till it stops. We're going to thread the top or back one in, whatever you want to call it. Thread in until it stops. Right there. I'm going with 20. Why? On used stuff, the threads are never perfect, so I always go with the higher end of the torque specs. That way it kind of overrides any binding of the threads, which could give you an inaccurate torque reading. One click there. All right. Now remember, before you go for a ride, pump your rear brake a few times because you need to get those pistons, the seat and the pistons and the pads to seat up against the rotor again. Otherwise, the first time you hit the brakes, you're not going to have anything. Nobody wants that. How far in shot are we here? There's this, there's this. Now from there, From there, we can slide. Got our brake wire here, and we got our little clip that came off of this that holds our ABS sensor in place. So we'll slide that up out of the way, make sure it's not bound up on anything, make sure it's got a little bit of looseness back there. Then, I somehow or another ended up with the quick connect behind the mud flap. It should have been in the front of it. Luckily, mud flaps are flexible. From there, we can plug our quick connect back in for our ABS sensor. Now, I forgot to put this thing in here before I put the mud flap on. Uh, so there's just enough room in here, I should be able to get in here and pop it into place. However, you're not gonna be able to see it. So moral of the story is, remember to put that thing in. Okay, so you may remember when I took this thing apart, um, I backed the bolt out one full turn. So we are going to take it in three quarters of a turn on both sides. Right about there. 
Now to set the uh, rear wheel alignment on the soft tail, you measure from the center line of the axle to the center line of the swing arm bolt. In this case, that's gonna be like, well, looks like we're at 17 inches right on the money. Now we're gonna compare that to the other side and we're gonna make sure we're fairly close to being straight. Then we're gonna check the belt tension. Now we're gonna compare this side. Now remove this axle adjuster. Man, uh, it's really close. Um, this one's about 15, 16, 15, 16. So this one's actually gonna have to go out a little bit more. But before we do that, we're gonna find the belt tensioning tool that I just had in my hand. So Harley recommends uh, half inch of deflection with 10 pounds of force. Half inch, three eighths of deflection. So on some of them, you have a little window here, which is great. Uh, this one doesn't. So we're going to push it through the middle there and it's not even perfectly straight, but I have this little belt tension gauge I got on Amazon and there's a little mark on it here that says 10 pounds. You probably can't see it, but I swear it does. Either way, we're going to push this up here and push on that belt tension to the mark. all while using the tape measure. Can you see this? Probably not. That's right about a half inch at 10 pounds. So we're gonna call that pretty good. So that's an interesting conundrum because this side actually needs to go back a little bit further to get proper alignment. So what we're actually gonna do is loosen up the other side uh, and then we'll check it uh, side to side and then we'll torque it down. All right, we're at a 15, 16, 15, 16 so over on this side. All right, now it's in place. We're gonna torque the rear axle. They're inch and seven sixteenths socket. 